Hey, welcome back! In this tutorial I'll be showing you how I make my USGs. This tutorial will consist of two parts, seeing how otherwise the video would be really long if I were to try and shove everything into one video. Now before I start I want to let you guys know that I assume you're already quite experienced with Uchao, and I hope you already have a bit of knowledge regarding uh, the FL Studio software, seeing how I'll be using that program within this tutorial. And I won't be explaining the entire interface of the software, so it would be nice if you already had some knowledge regarding FL Studio. If you don't, that's fine, but just keep in mind that I won't be discussing the interface in full detail and everything. Alright, so what are we gonna need for this UST tutorial? We'll need both an on and an off vocal of the song we're gonna cover. Aside from that, we'll also need two separate programs besides Utau. One being FL Studio and the other being Mixmeister BPM Analyzer. I put download links in the description below, so be sure to download those first before you continue watching this tutorial. And of course, the lyrics of the song. Once you've gathered and installed all of these things, we can start. For this tutorial, I'll be USTing a song called How Low and Low by Halosy. The first step of making a UST involves a process called MIDIing. What is MIDIing? MIDIing is trying to replicate the melody of a song by listening carefully to the song and then writing down the notes. This sounds complicated, but don't worry, it's really not that hard once you get the hang of it. It just involves a lot of practice. So what we're gonna do first is open up our playlist, which is this area right here, and we're gonna go and drag in our on vocal. Then we're gonna open up our mixer, we're gonna turn off the fruity limiter, and we're gonna assign our on vocal to this uh, first track. We'll go to link selected channels and go to this track. Then we're gonna go to the step sequencer, which is the second button here. And we're gonna open up this and go to all. And then we're gonna de delete all of the default options right here, except for one. I'm gonna keep this. And I'm gonna right click and go to replace. And then 3x OSC. Now make sure the light on the 3x OSC is green right here and go back to the mixer state. Then we're gonna assign the MIDI track, which is the OSC3X blah blah thing we just made. And we're gonna right click, and again, we're gonna assign this to this channel, to this track. The reason we assign these tracks to different mixer channels is so the audio of the off vocal can be altered. So if you're MIDIing, you can simply lower the audio of the on vocal so you can hear the MIDI notes better. Otherwise it will be very hard to hear your MIDI track. As you can see, the MIDI track isn't in our playlist area yet, so in order to make it appear there, we're gonna go click here. We're gonna go to pattern 1. And click that. As you can see we now have a little paintbrush and we just click somewhere random on the second track. Now that that is done we're gonna analyze what BPM our song has. For this we're gonna use the Mixmeister software I mentioned earlier in the video. We're gonna go back to the folder we had our on vocal in. We're gonna drag and drop that into the analyzer. Now as you can see it gives us a number here. This number however is not always 100% accurate so usually it's around 160 in this case. Now we're gonna go back to FL Studio and we're gonna assign the right BPM to our MIDI. We're also gonna turn on the metronome option. The metronome is simply a tapping noise which will help you indicate the tempo of the song. Now we're first gonna need to adjust some settings, seeing how I assume this is one of the first times you're using FL Studio, so please go to this little triangle here, go to snap, and make sure it says none. 
Otherwise, it's gonna be a bit tricky to align the song with the metronome ticking noise. Once you've done that, we're gonna match the song and the MIDI track to the right tempo. And I'll show you what I mean by that. As you can hear, the song now matches the BPM we just generated. Now we have to figure out where the vocal starts so we know where to position our pattern. As you can hear, the vocals start right here. So I'm gonna drag this thing over here and try your best to match it as accurately as possible with these lines here. So I'm gonna drag this pattern and put it all the way against this bar right here. This way our MIDI will match perfectly with the tempo. Now, as I said, because we assigned these uh, two things to different tracks, we can play around with the volume levels, so I'm gonna lower the volume level of our own vocal a bit, so it's easier to hear the MIDI noises. Now we're gonna click on the piano roll and make sure that this right here says 3x OSC. Now if we place our player all the way at the beginning and we press our spacebar, we can start MIDIing. First we have to make sure that our snapping though, the snap option right here is either at one fourth or one third. I personally prefer to use one fourth. By enabling this snapping, the notes will always be the correct size. So there'll be an entire note length, half a note length, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, etc. Okay, so let's start mediating. As you can see, the player stops right here. The reason why this happens is because our, we didn't draw our pattern long enough. In order to fix this, we're gonna go back to our playlist. Zoom out, and as you can see, our pattern is only about this length. So what we're gonna do is scroll all the way and we're gonna stretch this all the way across the entire song. So we won't have this problem again. Now, when you're new to MIDIing, you probably won't be able to MIDI this fast as I just did right now. 
but that's because I've made a lot of USTs prior to this, so I'm very used to the mediating process. And by doing this more often and often, it'll become much easier to recognize the notes within a song. One thing I can recommend to beginners though, is that if you have trouble figuring out what note a certain note is, just try and hum the melody. So, for example, say I don't know what this note is. Just try to hum it or sing it or whatever. And see? Just try dragging the note around while humming and eventually you'll hear when you have the right note. Yeah. <laughs> It's really hard to explain, but this really helped me when I was new to making USTs. Another tip I can give to beginners is that every song is sung in a certain key. Key being a selection of certain notes that a song uses. Alright, so let me pull up a little example regarding that right now. As you can see, all of the notes follow a certain pattern. For example, they're only using E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, and so on and so forth. This is really helpful when figuring out notes, as you can immediately tell when a note sounds very weird and out of place within the melody. Now let's go back to the one we were working on. Another tip I can give to beginners is that if you want to MIDI a song that has a very fast tempo or has very short notes, there is this option in FL Studio which allows you to slow down the song. All you have to do is right click here on the tempo and click here, half speed. Now if we play our song again... play at half of its speed. Of course with a song like this you won't be needing this, but let me give you an example where you will need it. So this is an example where you probably will need a half tempo option. With this song I was very lucky, because as you can hear the melody repeats quite often, so I only had to listen to it very carefully like once and then just copy and paste everything a couple of times. However later on in this song, there's a different part where the melody gets even faster and the notes get even shorter. So here I really appreciated the help of the half tempo option. So now if I play it at half tempo, at half speed, I mean, okay, wait, come, fuck, don't do that. As you can see, it's a lot easier to hear the notes this way than it would be at normal speed. Okay, and let's go back. Now another thing that might be handy to know is how do I make a second MIDI track? Say for example you're MIDIing a duet and you have two people singing at the same time with different lyrics. What do you need to do then? Well, let me show you. If you want to make a second MIDI track, we're first gonna go to the step sequencer, right click on the already existing uh, MIDI track, and go to insert and we'll pick another one. Then we'll click on this little plus button here where it says pattern one. 
And that way a second pattern will be created. And we're gonna go back to our playlist. I'm gonna zoom out. And we're gonna make sure that it says pattern 2 right here. And then we'll have the paintbrush and we'll paint it right alongside pattern 1. Now double click on the pattern and open the piano roll. And make sure it says your second 3x OSC track right here. Otherwise you'll be painting in the exact same MIDI track and that's gonna cause a lot of trouble for Itao. <laughs> so if I were to paint some notes right here right now, we're gonna go back to playlist. You can see we have a second MIDI track now. And now that I'm on the topic of two MIDI tracks playing at the same time, I'll also show you how I make harmonies, seeing how songs often use harmonies and everything. And to be honest, it's really easy to make them. So let's just make some harms for this melody we just created right here. What we'll do is we'll pick a different color. I usually pick red or pink. First, I'll paint a note somewhere randomly. As you can see, I have all of these stripes down here. If you don't have this, then your menu will probably look something like this. So if you want to enable that, just drag this up and there you go. This thing is pretty much the volume manager of every note. And because harmonies always sound quieter than the main melody, I'm first gonna adjust the volume of this note. I usually lower it to about here. And now we can start making the harmonies. Now I'm first gonna make some harmonies, and then I'll let you know on the theory behind them. I know not all of these notes have uh, originally harmonies, but I'm just doing it for the sake of this tutorial right now. Now let's play them. They sound pretty alright to me. Now why would I choose for these exact notes and why not different ones? Like I mentioned earlier, this all has to do with key. As you can see I only placed notes on notes that were already in the original melody. These harmonies are thus in key with the original melody. I usually leave two or three spaces of notes between the original melody and the harmonies. But sadly I only know how to do low harmonies like this and not high harmonies. I have tried making high harmonies before but it's really difficult and I just cannot get them to sound right. So I'm afraid I won't be able to explain those. Now I personally don't make a separate harmony MIDI track. Instead, once I've made the main UST and I'm done with inserting all the lyrics and tuning and everything, I copy and paste the file and then just adjust the notes within the copied file to match the harmonies I drew in the FL Studio file. Now, once you're all satisfied with your MIDI and you want to export it to an actual MIDI file, first you're gonna go to Tools, then Macros, and prepare for MIDI export. Then click Yes, okay. And then just go to File, Export, MIDI File. And you can save it wherever you like. And that's pretty much it regarding MIDIing. Keep in mind that the free version of FL Studio sadly doesn't allow you to save your project file. And thus you'll have to make everything in one go. Or you'll have to leave FL Studio opened up for a very long time. Luckily the FL Studio download I put in the description is a fully registered portable download. Don't tell anyone. In the second part, I'll be going over the entire UST aspect of this tutorial. So I recommend you go check out this video. Anyway, I'll hope you guys learned something from this tutorial and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Bye!